Hi, and welcome to another Rotex Minute here on RotexOwner.com. In this segment, as promised, I'll be giving you more information and compliance instructions for Alert Service Bulletin ASB 912061, which covers the fuel pressure hose assembly on certain 912 series mechanical fuel pumps. It was found that in some cases, the rubber in the fuel pressure hose assembly could break down, releasing rubber particles into the fuel stream, contaminating the pressure side of the fuel system and carburetors. Please have a look at our previous Rotax Minute segment covering Rotax Alert Service Bulletin ASB 912061 for more information on this specific issue. This Alert Service Bulletin must be complied with before next flight. Rotax has now released a revised version of this Alert Service Bulletin which lists specific part number for the fuel pressure hose assembly. Also included in this revision are instructions for inspection of the fuel system as well as installation of the replacement pressure fuel hose assembly. The replacement fuel pressure hose assembly and related parts are now available from Rotax and are being shipped to their supply network. The minimum parts required for inspection and replacement of the fuel pressure hose assembly are 1. Fuel pressure hose assembly part number 874336, one 10mm gasket ring, part number 250425, and three 8mm gasket rings, part number 950143. Additional parts may be needed if, during inspection, contamination is found in the fuel system, requiring the carburetors and fuel lines to be removed and cleaned. Required parts can be ordered from your nearest Rotax service center, repair center, or Rotax service provider. If your fuel pump is affected by part number and serial number ranges listed in the alert service bulletin, the fuel pressure hose assembly and required gasket rings will be provided under warranty. Contact your nearest Rotax service center, repair center, or Rotax service provider for warranty details. As a reminder, this alert service bulletin affects only specific mechanical fuel pump part numbers which were supplied on specific Rotax 912 series aircraft engines or sold as spare parts. Of the specific part number fuel pumps, only a specific serial number range are affected. A list of these affected part number and serial number ranges can be found in section 1.1 of alert service bulletin ASB 912061. Be aware that for all alert service bulletins, Rotax releases two different versions of the document, separating certified from non-certified aircraft engines. Certified aircraft engines and serial numbers can be found listed in Alert Service Bulletin ASB 912061, while non-certified or UL engine serial numbers are listed in Alert Service Bulletin ASB 912. 061 UL. Be sure to check the appropriate document affecting your specific engine type. If in doubt of your engine type, check the serial numbers listed in both bulletins. The following work must be performed by a qualified independent Rotax maintenance technician or a Rotax service facility with appropriate tools, training and endorsements. Contact your nearest Rotax service center, repair center, or Rotax service facility for assistance. A list of these can be found on the Rotax owner website under Support and Find Service. Inspect the carburetor float bowls for contamination. Remove the drip trays if installed on your engine. Pull back the spring clip and remove the float bowls, floats, and float bowl gaskets. Check the float bowls for any signs of contamination. If no contamination is found in the float bowls, the float bowl gaskets and the float bowls with floats can be reinstalled and the retaining spring clip securely fastened. You can now continue on to remove and replace the fuel pressure hose assembly on the fuel pump. If any contamination is found in the float bowls, then the source of the contamination must be found. The contaminated carburetors must be removed, cleaned, and inspected. For specific information on the maintenance and cleaning of the carburetors, 
see our three video series on the disassembly, inspection and cleaning, and reassembly of Rotax 912 series Bing 64 carburetors. These videos show the replacement of all parts typically supplied in a carburetor overhaul kit. Depending upon the hours and calendar time on your carburetors, you may not require the replacement of all parts shown in these videos. Discretion must be applied depending upon the condition of your carburetors. At the very least, you should install a new float bowl gasket and carburetor O-rings. A carburetor gasket kit is available from Rotax, part number 996947. As a special note, during the carburetor cleaning process, extra attention should be given to the small chamber on the inlet side of the carburetor above the carburetor float needle, looking closely for any foreign contamination. Use shop air to blow out the cavity from the float needle seat side towards the fuel inlet side to ensure any possible contamination is allowed to escape. If contamination was present in the float bowls, then the pressure side of the fuel system, including fuel distribution block and fuel distribution hoses to the carburetors, should be cleaned to remove any possible contamination. Depending upon the severity of the contamination, we suggest that the entire fuel system may require inspection and cleaning. If your engine is equipped with a restricted orifice return line to the fuel tank, the restricted orifice banjo bolt on the top of the fuel distribution block may become clogged with contamination, so it must also be removed and cleaned. The fuel distribution hose and banjo bolts can be blown out with clean, dry shop air. They can also be flushed out with clean fuel. Instructions on maintenance of the fuel system can be found in the Heavy Maintenance Manual, Chapter 73. Regardless of whether or not you have removed and cleaned contamination from the carburetors and fuel system, the fuel pressure hose assembly on the fuel pump must be replaced. Remove the fuel pressure hose assembly from the fuel pump. This hose is unserviceable and must be scrapped. Be extremely careful to ensure that no residual Loctite material or contamination enters the fuel pump during pressure hose removal through this now open port. Although it would be some extra work, and it is not specifically required by this alert service bulletin, a suggestion to help ensure that no contamination falls into the fuel pump is to first crack open the fitting of the fuel pressure hose assembly at the fuel pump, but do not fully loosen or remove the line. Next, remove the fuel pump from the gearbox mounting flange and hold the pump so that the small diameter fuel pressure hose points directly down. Having the fuel pump removed and holding it with the fuel pressure hose pointing down will allow gravity to work in your favor and help ensure that the fuel pump does not get contaminated. The fuel pressure hose assembly can now be fully removed from the fuel pump. Very carefully clean out and degrease the threads in the fuel pump, making sure no contamination enters the fuel pump. We also suggest that you inspect the inside of the fuel pump through the open port to ensure that no contamination has been introduced into the pump. If contamination is found inside the pump, we suggest that the fuel pump be thoroughly flushed. If you have removed the fuel pump from the gearbox, discard the original fuel pump isolating flange and O-ring. Place a new O-ring, part number 631870, onto the fuel pump flange, and place a new isolating flange, part number 950228, onto the gearbox mounting flange studs. Place the fuel pump back onto the gearbox mounting flange. Place new lock washers, part number 945752, and torque the mounting nuts to 133 inch pounds, or 15 newton meters. Place a new gasket ring, Rotax part number 250425, on the replacement fuel pressure hose assembly fitting, and place a small amount of Loctite 243 on the threads. Install and torque the fuel pressure hose assembly fitting to the fuel pump 
with 90 inch-pounds or 10 newton meters. Make sure that there is no tension or stress in the fuel pressure hose assembly. Place the double banjo bolt with a gasket ring, part number 950143, through the fuel pressure hose assembly banjo fitting. Place another gasket ring on the banjo bolt and place the bolt through the fuel distribution hose center banjo fitting. With another gasket ring, attach this double banjo bolt to the bottom of the fuel distribution block. Torque this banjo bolt to 90 inch pounds or 10 newton meters. If the carburetors were removed and the fuel distribution hose disconnected for cleaning, reinstall the carburetors. Using new gasket rings, Rotex part number 950143 and the double banjo bolts, install the fuel distribution lines to the carburetors. Place the double banjo bolt with a new gasket ring through the banjo fitting on the fuel distribution hose. Place another gasket ring, then the spacer, then another gasket ring, and place the banjo bolt carefully into the carburetor body. The double banjo bolt and spacer allows clearance for the fuel distribution hose. Make sure that there is no tension on the fuel distribution hose and that the threads of the banjo bolts thread in easily by hand. Torque the banjo bolts to 90 inch pounds or 10 newton meters. Another special note, if your engine is equipped with a restricted orifice return line to the fuel tank and it was removed for cleaning, Reinstall the restricted orifice banjo bolt with new gasket rings, Rotex part number 950143, and torque to 90 inch pounds or 10 newton meters. Double check that the float bowls are secure and that all fuel lines have been replaced and torqued with new gasket rings. Run the engine and check for any fuel leaks. Once an engine run has been performed and no leaks are present, remove the carburetor float bowls, floats and float bowl gaskets once again and check for any contamination. If any contamination is found in the float bowls, the entire fuel system must be inspected and cleaned. If the float bowls are clean, reinstall the float bowl gaskets and the float bowls with floats, making sure the retaining spring clip is secure. Replace the drip trays if your engine was so equipped. In cases where you have removed the carburetors for cleaning, we suggest to pneumatically balance the carburetors. For detailed information, see our video on 912-914 series carburetor balancing. Instructions for carburetor balance can also be found in the Line Maintenance Manual, Chapter 12-20-00, Section 10. Once the carburetors have been balanced, all the fuel lines and float bowls checked for leaks, and an appropriate logbook entry has been made, the aircraft can be returned to service. If you have any comments or suggestions for a Rotax Minute, email us at rotaxminute at rotaxowner.com.